Hi, I'm Jeff Francis, professional audio engineer and educator. These days we're spending a lot of time on Zoom, and I'm going to show you five aspects that you can improve to make it a better experience for both you and your students. Internet, audio, lighting, video, and etiquette. But stick with me, we're going to move pretty fast. Internet. It goes without saying that you need fast upload speeds, but if you're still on Wi-Fi, you haven't done enough. Move through questions a little slower at the beginning of the hour. Did you hear and see that little glitch in the audio and video? That's a micro stall, and it happens on Wi-Fi all the time. The solution? Wired Ethernet. So this might take a little work, but get your Ethernet cable and get to the back of your router and connect to Wired Ethernet. Once you're wired, the most important part of communication is sound. So how do we get better sound? Most people will just use the built-in mics on their laptop. I'm not saying you need a professional microphone. Or even one of these fancy headset mics. What you do need is a set of these. Wired earbuds with an inline microphone. Wearing earbuds is going to do two things. It's going to move the microphone closer to your mouth, which will reduce room sound, and will also allow us to turn on original sound, which will make for clearer speech or music, if that's your application. To let you hear the improvement, here's me speaking just using the built-in mic on my laptop. Now instead, wired earbuds with an inline microphone. A simple solution, and probably something you already have at hand. Let's take a quick dive into the Zoom audio settings, which can be accessed right next to the Zoom mute button. While we're here, check the box that mutes your microphone when joining a meeting. That's just good etiquette. Then go to the Advanced tab and check the box to show the Enable Original Sound button. Now, each time you join a meeting, go to the upper left-hand corner and click Turn On Original Sound. Lighting. Even the best cameras can't work without light. And if the lighting is behind you, you'll be cast into darkness. Even in normal room lighting, my face is still fairly dim. What we need to do is add some front light. That's getting there, but we could even add some more light on the other side in the front. That looks good. Maybe now to dress up the background with some color. Remember, you want the bright lights in front of you and not behind you. So if you're seated in front of a window, the bright light can wash you out but that's easily fixed by reorienting your workstation. The lighting doesn't have to be expensive. A ring light or a paper lantern lamp can work well. And if you find the light is too harsh, try bouncing it off the front wall. Once you have good lighting, your computer's webcam should be sufficient. From there, it's all about framing. So make sure you sit in the center of the frame and don't chop off the top of your head or your chin. Raise the camera up to eye level. If you're using a laptop, that may mean a laptop stand. And if you're connecting from a phone, be sure to turn it sideways so you're in landscape mode. And get a stand. Don't try to hold your phone throughout a meeting. Now that your shot is framed nicely, take a look at the background. Make sure there's nothing distracting back there. What about virtual backgrounds? Well, just don't. Trust me, just don't. Just like every community, online communities have their own etiquette. They may vary slightly, but there are some hard and fast rules. Mute when you're not speaking, and definitely be muted when you come into a meeting. Raise your hand, either your physical or digital hand, when you want to speak and wait to be called on. And when speaking, be sure you look into the camera, not down at your screen. I hope these have been helpful. Once you get the basics down, there's plenty of room to invest to improve your microphone, camera, and lighting. Good luck.